Hello everyone once again and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. Now what we're going to be looking here is how to draw a Hess cycle using combustion data. So this is enthalpy of combustion data as you can see from our table just up here. And the actual reaction that we're going to be doing this for is just shown at the bottom here. And this is actually, if you look carefully at it, is actually an enthalpy of formation equation for glucose, which is what uh, this molecule is over here on the right hand side, so for solid glucose. Now, a couple of things just before we get started. Don't forget that in the new spec that the little f, c or whatever appears in between the delta and the h, so they change the notation a bit, whereas you can see up here this is an older exam paper and the c comes after the h. It means absolutely nothing different, it's just they change the notation a little bit. Now, over here as well, what we've also got for this equation is an extra sort of complication that was brought up in the exam paper that asked, why is the enthalpy change for this reaction difficult to measure? And the answer for that is, look at what we're reacting together. This equation suggests that if we take carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and put them together, we're going to get glucose. Good luck with that. You're going to get CO2 and H2O, aren't you? In fact, you could get other things as well. The point is, it's very difficult to control this reaction to make glucose because you're going to end up mainly with CO2 and H2O, but you could suggest other things as well. But really, that's the direction we're going for. We've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen reacting together. You're just going to set things on fire. It's going to blow them up. It's just going to be combustion, isn't it? So instead, what we need to use is a Hess cycle, which is the whole purpose of this video, so that we can calculate an alternative route and still achieve an enthalpy change for this reaction, even though it's very difficult to control. All right, so I've just rearranged things a little bit. And what we're going to do is draw our Hess cycle now. Now, if you want to know how to draw a Hess cycle using enthalpy of formation data, there is a video for that for our channel, and you can check the cards for this video to see um, a link directly to that if you want. For now, however, I'm just going to get on with this one. Now, we've got lots of enthalpy of combustion values just here. It is kilojoules per mole, so each of these values is for one mole of whatever that is combusting. Now, because it's an enthalpy of combustion set of data, we're completely ignoring the fact it's an enthalpy of formation equation, because remember that has absolutely zero impact. What we're going to show at the bottom of the Hess diagram is going to be the uh, combustion products of everything from the top line. Now, the combustion products are really easy for this, because the only thing that we can combust anything from this top line equation into is CO2 and H2O. And to be honest with you, a vast majority of these diagrams using combustion data just have CO2 and H2O at the bottom. Sometimes we've got SO2, sometimes we've got NO2, but really it just tends to be these. So that's kind of good practice to go into. We don't have to worry about balancing the bottom whatsoever. We can just completely leave that. Now, the other thing that I want to mention at the moment is, and I've mentioned this in the enthalpy formation Hess diagram video, is the oxygen. Now you'll notice in the table up here there is no oxygen value and that's because oxygen has no enthalpy of combustion because you can't combust oxygen. Oxygen can't react with itself, that's just called more oxygen, you're just making a big pile of oxygen. And it's also the only element um, that doesn't have an enthalpy of formation either which is an interesting little fact. So, drawing the diagram then, what I've got is all the enthalpy changes to turn the top line into the bottom. So what that means I need to do is I need to show all my arrows from everything I have a value for going to this bottom line. Now if you draw multiple arrows like I've done that's fine but if you just have one left hand side arrow and one right hand side arrow then that's okay as well. It's just I like to show one for every single part. Now if we start on the left hand side because it makes the most sense what we've got is our alternative route so we can think of it as what we're trying to get to happen is we're trying to go via the bottom to the right hand side to our glucose, our solid glucose. The arrows on the left are currently pointing that right direction and so the six carbon here, the data table at the top tells me that if I was to combust one mole of the carbon I would get out minus 394 kilojoules per mole. Um, but actually I can see from the equation that I've got six being combusted so all I do is I do six times that number. Nice and simple. And we can we bracket that up. Nice and easy there. Now, what we've also got then is our hydrogen. So for our hydrogen one then, we've got six times, exactly the same thing, six times its value, because the value in the table is for one mole. And I've got six moles of it being combusted to that bottom line. And so I just do six times the minus 286. Nice and easy. But then we get to the right hand side. And at the moment, on my right hand side, this arrow is very much pointing the wrong way. It's not allowing me to get to the glucose 
via this alternative route. So what I need to do is, it's a little bit vicious, I need to completely cross that arrow. I need to get rid of it. I cross it out. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reverse it and theoretically, every enthalpy change, even if it's an irreversible reaction, theoretically, every enthalpy change has an equal but opposite sign delta H value. So here, going down to the bottom, combusting the glucose, was, as we can see in the data table at the top, it was this value of minus 2801. What I'm going to do now is, since I'm reversing the arrow, I'm going to reverse the sign on the number but keep it completely equal. So it's going to be positive. I'll put the positive there. You don't have to. But I just want to make a point. Positive 2801. Now, to calculate the enthalpy change for the top reaction then, so for that enthalpy of formation for glucose, I'm going to use this enthalpy of combustion data, and I'm literally going to take 6 times minus 394, add 6 times minus 286, add 2801, and that's going to give me the enthalpy change. And so the enthalpy change of this reaction was, and remember, it was an enthalpy of formation. It makes no difference, but it was. And the value was minus 1,279. And again, that was three marks in the exam. Just like the other video that shows you how to use enthalpy of formation data, we use an enthalpy of combustion data here, as you can see from the top table still. And it's uh, given us a nice exothermic answer. It makes no difference whether it's X or endo. We've used the right method. We know exactly what we've got as our answer using a very clear set of working out. And it means at the end of the paper, if you've got any time left, you can see what working out you've done. You can double check your numbers. It's really easy in the exams to press the wrong number. And you feel a bit stupid for it, but really it's just because you're under pressure or you could miss out a decimal, something like that, or get the wrong sign. If you lay out the working out like a Hess cycle we just did, you know exactly what you've done. You can see it and then you can go back and correct it, and you'll kick yourself if you don't do it, because you'll get there, and you have to put all the numbers through again, and it can get very confusing. I'll leave you to the rest of our playlist for now then, and until then, happy revising.